May 4th, a seemingly normal day, and suddenly a post pops up on the World Thunder website. Finally! It's update time! Oh, I'm so excited! Surely the community will be happy and thankful. Another successful job done. Gaijin couldn't have been more wrong that day. So, War Thunder had a bit of a hiccup this last month, and to learn what happened, first you need to understand this about our lovely game. Vehicles in War Thunder past the earlier tiers cost a lot of in-game money, called Silver Line, to repair and rearm, and it's normal to barely get enough Silver Lines to scrape by, sometimes even when winning and doing well. This made it really difficult and frustrating to progress in the game. In contrast, premium vehicles, while costing a lot of real money, have to be repaired as well. But since you're in an increased amount of silver lines, as with a normal vehicle, it obviously has less impact on the player's economy. The community has been complaining about this system for years now, but the devs allegedly ignored and even deleted feedback of players that were bringing attention to the issue, pushing it aside. And so, on May 4th, an update dropped that pushed the whole thing over the edge. Years of the economy being slowly changed into a painful grind and people finally had enough. Now, apparently, it all started with a Chinese player named Lilia that posted an inspirational yet direct message on their forums. It got a lot of attention and people feeling inspired shared the post all over Reddit and other related sites but apparently, the posts got deleted, for various reasons, and people got pissed off. But with the thought already in their minds, and the community just needing a little push, do it. it was enough. This was the last straw. And they went to war. Thunder. Yes, I did that. And so, we shall go to war! <laughs> Bad reviews started flooding the game's various sites, meme and propaganda posters were spreading all over the world under Reddit, Discord servers and other social media, and YouTubers were also voicing their opinions on the whole cluster. So there's a little fiasco going on in the War Thunder community. It's also been a while since I've had a good Gaijin rant, so I figured why not. But War Thunder's economy has been getting really bad. This whole situation also led to the creation of the War Thunder Player Union, where players from all over the world were banding together to plan out their next move, discuss the best changes to the game, and coordinate with each other. Or as they put it, our main goal is to communicate with Gaijin and get some sustainable improvements implemented. So, in a sense, it was quite beautiful actually. US, EU, Asia, Russia working together. But some people were skeptical. What will you accomplish? Stop this foolishness! You're only hurting the game! The most notable impact though was on War Thunder's Steam page. The reviews went from positive to negative in less than a few days and over 23,000 negative reviews posted in one single day. The more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. 90,000 in a week. People were ecstatic. Keep, Keep it, it up. up! More memes! Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your fucking hamster. They also went after War Thunder on Metacritic, Google and Xbox. More! Oh, feed me. Trustpilot. Bombed. Sourceforge. Bombed. Their YouTube videos were getting disliked as well. Boom. Bombed. Gaming news sites smelled the blood in the water, and articles started popping up all over the internet, and everyone was talking about it. Meanwhile, Kaijin in damage control mode removed Steam from their official website. And then, on the 19th of May, another post on the War Thunder site. Gaijin decided to cancel the recent changes and address the community concerns. And Gaijin finally did the right thing. But, on the same day, another post pops up. Oh boy. From the words of the community, 
a lot of hypocrisy, irony and gaslighting in one of the most tone-deaf response. The response was incredibly tone-deaf. And it was 100% tone-deaf. Telling the players to stop the negative reviews on Steam as it will deter new players and to use less destructive means to express their opinions, such as their official forums. So telling the people to post in their controlled area instead of posting in an environment that is public and out of their reach. Essentially telling the community their plan is working. You're not greedy. You're batshit insane! People were pissed, and the bombing continued. Among all the things already happening, there were also plans to try and boycott the game, starting on the 26th of May. Stop playing the game or delete it altogether for at least two weeks, until the community's demands are satisfied. But we'll get back to that. And so the 23rd of May comes around, and Gaijin posts another... post. But this time, they got it right. We're sorry you will fix this. Give us time, please, we fucked up. Finally, a step in the right direction. They admitted they were wrong and they showed they care. But even so, the community was torn. Finally, the snail admitted defeat, but apparently this also happened in the past and nothing changed. So trust in the company was low, so there were people on one side cautiously optimistic saying to stop the negative reviews, we achieved our goal, give them time, give them room to breathe. And on the other side, people were pushing for a continuation of negative reviews, as well as for the boycott on the 26th. They apologized in the past and didn't keep their promises. Don't trust them again, is what they were saying. But in the article, Gaijin promised they will reveal a roadmap on the 14th of June, explaining their plans for fixing this mess, and that made most people feel like that was that. The whole momentum kind of shifted down into a very, very slow crawl. Because after all, all they could do now is wait. But saying that, a day later, during the cover of darkness, in the middle of Moscow, someone walked up to the Gaijin tower and taped some specific pieces of paper onto the windows. People were cheering. There's some particular things going on in that country, so absolute mad lad. <coughs> Let me just state for absolutely legal reasons. I have no idea if Gaijin is even still active in that building. I tried asking Gaijin, didn't get a reply. So let's just leave it at a, I don't know. Yeah, let's uh, move on, don't kill me. Then, unexpectedly, Steam hid most of the negative reviews posted in the prior days because of off-topic activity. The problem was, a lot of users just put in random memes, jokes and funny messages instead of actually writing a review, and Steam didn't like that. Although, this great recipe stayed up on the positive side. People were angry and devastated. Then users noticed this is actually a personal account setting where you can pick if you only want to see filter reviews where no off-topic activity was flagged or see them all regardless. This was unfiltered as the fault, so it wasn't great for the protesters. And another thing that was happening, Gaijin was really, really trying their best to promote their game using anime body pillows. I'm not making that up. And so the day of the boycott came around, the 26th of May. Everyone was talking about it. This was it. It was all leading up to this moment. And the player count didn't seem all that different. Hmm. There are numerous opinions and reasons why the boycott, player count wise, may or may not have been a success. But to provide some clarity, here's some of the probable reasons, but it is a controversial topic and obviously no one knows the exact why. Attention from the drama during new players. Gaijin manipulated the player count with bots. A public holiday in the US. Start of summer vacation. People simply ignoring the boycott. Anime body pillows. Boycotters logging in for the daily rewards. And so on, and so on, and so on. But hey, 
It's all up to you to decide for yourself, just like everyone else has. The boycott in its actual sense have very bad chances since the start, as most of the player base didn't even know of anything happening, for them it was just another normal day playing the game. <clears throat> the most effective way for consumers to boycott a company is to target its reputation rather than simply refusing to use their products. This is because a company's reputation will directly impact their financial success, and they're damn aware of it. No, don't do it! Of course, not buying anything from the company also helps. I need money! And all of this was successfully achieved with the review bombing a few days prior. Still, the community got together and did something amazing. They managed to push a company into listening to them, reverting take changes back, and compromising with the players. So that's a great achievement all in itself. Either way, this is it. Kaijin has posted their roadmap one day sooner than they said they will. It's here. This is what everyone was waiting for. Did they do it? And my god, it's beautiful. People love it and Gaijin Fucking did it! <clears throat> well, let's summarize it up for you guys. The roadmap includes several changes to the game's economy and progression system, including reducing the cost of high tier vehicles, increasing the rewards for completing battles, and introducing a dynamic repair cost system, which means that if you die early in the battle, you won't have to pay the full repair cost. In addition to these changes, Gaijin will also be implementing several quality of life improvements and giving vehicles free repair parts and extinguishers from the start. Free! They also plan to improve communication with the community and be more transparent about changes made to the game. And of course, more. Overall, the roadmap seems to address many of the concerns raised by the community and shows a willingness by Gaijin to actually listen and work with the players. And they deserve a solid pat on the back. But. It's important to remember that actions speak louder than words, so hopefully they deliver on their promises and they don't let their community down again, because I have to make another video. Hopefully some other companies in this world of ours take note hmm. about the War Thunder Player Union. Just a few days before the roadmap was published, the movement had some internal skirmishes and imploded in on itself. Here's a TLDR. Regardless of their demise, they did play a big role in the whole movement and deserve a pat on the back as well. So, the boycott might not have decreased the player numbers by much, but it achieved something else. They called it Operation Touchgrass. The plan was uninstall the game, go touch grass instead. Simple. Quite emotional. And here is the best thing that I found while researching for this video, in my opinion anyway. So yes, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please, for the love of God, like and comment or something, because fucking hell, God knows I need it. My first time doing this type of video. Let me know if you liked it, and I will see you, hopefully, you know, next time. Subscribe if you liked it, you know. Goodbye! Apology for a bad English. Where were you? When economy died, I was at house eating Dorito when phone ring. Economy is kill. No.